Hello, it's Daniel and Craig. We are going to talk you through our interactive activity, Cracking 1 Million Passwords. This activity is really popular with learners. In fact, we've had more than 25,000 young people play it. Yeah, it's a great way to introduce programming and cybersecurity in a classroom. It really does feel like you're stepping into the shoes of a cyber criminal. Now, the activity introduces Python programming, cybersecurity, passwords, and hashing, but you don't need to have any experience or a lot of knowledge about these areas to use it. We found that this activity works really well for S1 to S4 computing science classes. It does involve a bit of copying and pasting and some patience too. If you're thinking of trying out this activity with a class or a group, here's what we would recommend doing. We'd recommend you watch the playthrough video, this video here. We'd recommend after that, you play through the activity yourself from start to end. And lastly, if you want to use the slides, check them out and then adapt them to suit how you want to use them. You don't need to download any extra software to play the activity. You just need a modern web browser, so something like Chrome or Firefox, and you can head straight to our website, cyberskillslesson.com. Okay, let's play the cracking 1 million passwords with Python activity. So you'll find it on the cyberskillslesson.com website, and it's cracking 1 million passwords. Let's start the lesson, Craig. So to get started, it's asking us to put in our name and our school first. So I'm going to put in my name and my school. I'm going to put in the school I went to. Let's go through the introduction here. So all the instructions are here. You can either watch the video or you can read the, the information on the screen. Let's just read it just now. One million passwords released. Passwords prevent other people from accessing our computers, our personal emails, or important websites. In this interactive lesson, you'll step into the shoes of a cyber criminal and use computer code to crack a massive collection of passwords. And then we've got the video. So here's the story. The video streaming website Catflix has been attacked by a gang of cyber criminals. The gang have stolen the login details for 1 million customers and released them onto the web. Each line of the leaked file contains a customer's username, which is their email address, and a version of the password. We can actually look at the, the big file of all the leaked passwords here. We can actually open the file up. And we've got a PDF here, and it has genuinely 1 million leaked passwords in it. It's got 14,245 pages, and it's a combination of email addresses and a form of people's passwords. So yeah, if you want to count them, there's definitely 1 million there. We made it. Yeah, each line of the leaked file contains a customer's username, which is their email address and a version of their password. So how are the passwords stored? Well, when companies store your passwords, they don't just save the password into a file, it's plain text. Because if someone managed to get hold of that password file, well, they could just read all the passwords, couldn't they? They could just read them. So before they save your password, they pass it through a hashing function. So the hashing function takes that plain text password and turns it into the hash values that you saw in that document. Yeah, so if we had a password that was octopus14, the hashing function would take that octopus14 password and it would turn it into what's called the hash. And the hash is this, this string here, like 02AB095. It doesn't look like Octopus 14 anymore. So it doesn't look like the original word anymore. This is the hashed version of the password, and that's what gets stored by the company. And the best thing about using a hashing function is that it only works one way. Once something's been hashed, it's almost impossible to work out what the original word was. But if the companies don't actually store your passwords, well, how do you get into the website? Well, when someone tries to log into Catflix, Catflix takes the password that you typed in, it hashes it, and then compares it with the hash that they have stored for you. And if those hashes match, then they let you into the website. And there's an example of what that looks like. But there's a weakness in the way of doing it. So if a cyber criminal steals a set of hashed passwords, it's almost impossible to take a hash and turn it back into that original password. But the weakness is with hashing passwords, lots of people are using poor passwords. So people are using passwords that are easy to guess. 
So there's a good chance that if at least one of those 1 million customers is using a simple word as their password, so something like football, then if we hash that word and compare it to the hash on the leaked list, then we can see if it matches. And if it, we know that matches, then that means that we know that word was their password. We've cracked it. Yeah, so we can take some of these like common words or things that we think people use as their password, work out the hash, and then see if that appears in the list. And if that appears in the list, we know that's their password. So there it's your turn. You can write code and try and work out the passwords in our elite list of 1 million passwords. So you need to follow the instructions and see how many of these 1 million passwords you can crack. Okay, here is our first task. So our first task is to use Python to hash a simple password. So the instructions are, let's use Python codes to see an example of a hashed password. Read the instructions tab and see what to do next. You might find it easier to make the trinket full screen when working on the code and use the menu at the top left of the box. So Craig, what are we looking at here? What's yeah. this trinket box? Yeah, so this is where we write the Python code. So you don't need to have anything installed. You don't need to download any software. We write the code on the left hand side and to run it, there's a button above it that says run. That's all you need to know. On the right hand side, it's got the instructions. And most of the time, you're not actually having to write the code yourself. Most of the time, it's just about copying and pasting the code from the right hand side into the one on the left hand side. So that's a really good tip when you're running this with a group. They don't need to be great at typing, but they do need to be accurate at copying and pasting the code to the right places. If you do happen to make a mistake and you want to restart the code to where it was at the beginning, in the little menu at the top left, Daniel, can you see that little there? Yeah, go in there. And there's an option to just reset the code. So that would just put it back to the way it was at the start of the task. So again, that's a really good tip. So Daniel, let's work through these steps. So step one, let's use Python code to see an example of a hashed password. Change the code on line four. So you see the numbers going down the side. Change the code to be that there. So it says result get hashed password. Okay. So I'm gonna copy this line of code that we're changing. And then I'm gonna paste that on line. And yeah, it's given us the hint here that we can use copy and paste. And it tells you what's happening. This uses the get hashed password function to hash the word night and store it in the variable called result. So that's step one. We're off to a good start. <laughs> okay. So step two, press the run button to run the code. You should see this result. Okay. So we can see here the hash of the word is, and then we've got a big long string, but it starts with 8F21. And then if we go back to instructions, the instructions and the results of these tabs here, in the instructions, it should say the hash of the word is 8F21. Yep, that's the same thing. Okay, step three, change the code to try hashing another word. So what is the hash of the word panda? Okay, so we're only changing one bit here. So rather than hashing the word night, we want it to be the word panda. So I'm going to change that word to panda. And I'm going to press run. So we now have the hash of that word. Perfect. So the next step says copy and paste the result into the quiz below. And if you're correct, then you can move on to the next step. So here's the quiz below down, Daniel. It says, what is the hash of the password panda? So you've just calculated that. So if you, you could run it again, or you could just go back into the result. So there you are. Take that line. And then I'll paste it here. Okay. I check my answer. Oh, correct, Craig. Good. <laughs> okay. So task to lesson loops. So step one, try running the code by pressing the run button. It will display the hash of L. So if I press run, I can see you've already got some slightly different code here, but we'll press run and see what it does. Okay, the hash of the word elephant is, and then we've got again, our big hash. I can already see here, there's a quiz question. It's asking what the hash of the word elephant <laughs> is. So go for it, call that in. Good, good, we are correct. So step two is let's create a list of words to have. So we've got to change line four from 
just elephant to say elephant telescope and that says football. You can make that window a wee bit wider if you like, Dan. See the see the little divider there? Yeah. Good idea, Craig. Good tip. And also what you can do is in here, if you're looking at activity on a small screen, go into the menu and click on full screen. Because the instructions and the code are both in the trinket window, you'll still be able to see both at the same time. Okay, so line four, I'm going to change that. Copy this. Smaller again. Okay, so line four now has four different words in it. And in Python, this is called a list. Next step, you can use a for loop to go along the list and hash each item. Delete the code in line six and seven and replace it with this code. Okay, so we need to change a couple of lines of code here. So I'm going to get rid of the code in line six and seven. And then I'm going to copy this code here. So I'm just going to make this bigger again so I don't miss anything. Now, will you do that, Daniel? It's a good idea to copy and paste all three lines at the same time. Because see that indentation, that spacing, that's important in Python. Python cares about that as well. So if you were to do it a line at a time, you might not have the proper indentation and basically the code wouldn't work. Let's try running the code now, Daniel, and it should iterate across each of the words in that list. It should hash each of them. Here we go. So press run. I can see the hash of the word elephant is this. Mm -hmm. The hash of the word telescope is this. The hash of the word football is this. And the hash of the word password is this one here. Cool. So again, this is just to get the feeling that you can use a computer program to do these things quickly for you. So you saw how you could do it for one individually, but what have you got to do it for four very quickly? And I think in the questions, Daniel, down here, it, it might be asking you for, yeah, these other answers. Okay, so let's go back up and try to find. So the hash of the word telescope. Well, we just worked that out. So the hash of the word telescope is this. So I'm going to copy and paste that. We'll check the answer. Good, good, we're correct. And football is the next one on the list. So we can copy that. Put it in here, we'll check the answer. We'll write again. Okay, another video. So brilliant. Now you know how to use Python to hash words and lists of words. There are different types of hashing function. So the one that we just used in that example is called SHA1. In order to crack the passwords on the leap list, we need to work out which hashing function Catflix used. So there's one bit of information that might help you. We know someone who signed up to Catflix last month and her username is rosie at intelligentbanking.com and we know that she used the password rainbow1515. And if you look on the leaked list, you can see that the hash of her password is that string down there. So we know a little bit of information here and we can put that to good use. We can use that to try and work out which hashing function Catflix are using. So how can we write some code to help us do that, Daniel? Yes, yeah, so we've got some more instructions again. So it's in here first. Let's see all the different hashing functions available in Python. We're going to need to use a new tool to do this. So step one is to change line two to include these extra functions. So I'm going to copy this line and we'll change line two to this. So what we're saying is from a library called cyber tools, we're going to import the get hashed password function, which we've just used, but we're also going to import another function. We're also going to take the show algorithms available function. And step two, we need to copy this code and put it on line seven. Now, I can see it only goes up to line six at the moment, so we're going to add in another line. So we've now got line seven. So I'm going to copy this, put it in place. And Craig, we're ready to run the code. It should display the names of all the different hash functions. Let's see. There we go, Craig. So we've got MD5, SHA3, SHA512, 224, 
Shake, Blake. Got a few here. Yeah, these are all hashing functions that are built into Python, basically. These are the different functions that we could use. We're using SHA-1 in those first examples, but Catflix will be using one of these, and it's our job to work out, okay, which one is it? So step four, we need to add some more code starting at line nine. And it's reminding us that we should copy and paste all of the instructions together. So I'm going to copy all of these lines and paste them on line nine. And again, that's important because we've got some indents here. If we got rid of these indents, the code would behave in a different way or it might not run at all. So it's important that we copy and paste it as it's written here and copying the whole thing is an easy way to do that. So what this code's going to do is it's going to hash the word rainbow 1515 and it's going to check to see if it matches the one on the list using the SHA-1 hashing function. So Craig, are you ready to see if it's a match? Yes, go for it. Okay, not a So match. it's not a match. So we know that they're not using SHA-1. So Catflex must be using a different hashing function. Let's try a different one. So what we're going to do is change the code on line nine. So try SHA-224, Daniel. Okay, so I'm going to copy. In fact, you, just you can just type it in, yeah. You just be careful. from one to two, two, four. And we're going to run the code again. Okay. It's not a match, Craig. It's not a match. Let's try another one. So what you do now with the class and with the group is they've got to change that number to be one of the other known algorithms. So you just go through and work through them all until you find it. Daniel, we know this exercise. I know which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know which one is it, Craig? I think it's, I think we went for MD5 and I deliberately put that near the end of the list, but not right at the very end, but just annoyingly far enough. Found it. Yep, found That's it. the one that we're yep. using. Is An MD5 question? is a really common, it's, it's a popular one as well, isn't it? In real life. Yeah, it used to be a lot more common, but for reasons that we're about to come on to, it's not quite as popular anymore. But here we go. MD5. We'll check the answer. Correct. Okay. That is Good. the hashing algorithm that Catflix are using. And we've checked that by using an example that we definitely know, and it's matched up. What's quite nice, Daniel, is that as people work through this, you get the feeling of what it might be like to try and solve a problem like this. And it's guiding you through the steps. And that's the way it should feel when you're doing it with a class. It's, it's like a puzzle that you're solving, but you're giving them enough information to solve that puzzle. If you think about it, what we've been doing here, Daniel, you don't need to know any Python and you don't even need to know the maths about how it works. All you need to be able to do is follow the instructions carefully. It should be suitable for everyone to do as well. So let's, let's continue. Let's go on to the next task. So we've got another video here. And this one is talking about bad passwords. So now we know which hashing function Catflix used. We're one step closer to cracking the passwords. But we've got that file of 1 million usernames and passwords. But let's start with a smaller list of just 100. And each line in the file has a username and a hashed password. So what we want to do is we want to see if anyone on that smaller list of just 100 people has been stupid enough to use the word password as their password. Okay. So that, you know, is a commonly used password. Is there a chance that someone might have done that? What we can do is we can find the hash of the word password and then compare it to every hash on each line in the file. And if they match, we know that that person's password is password. Yeah, so we're using Trinket again, and we've got another piece of code here that is almost all written for us. We just have to make some changes. So the first step is to get the hash of the word password. So we have to change line four. So we want it to say result equals get hashed password. And then between these quotes, we want it to say password. And I want to use the MD5 hash because we know that's what Catflex are using. We just figured that out. So step two, we can use Python to read in the contents of the leaked file. And the leaked file is called leaked data 100txt 
So we can take a look at that file, leakeddata100.txt at the top here. So we've got a few different tabs. These are the different files that Trigkit is using. So if we move to that tab, we can see here we have 100 usernames, emails, and the hashed passwords that these people are using. So the next step is to change line seven of the code. So we need to go back to main.py. And we want to change line seven to be this here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in line seven. So we're going to open leaked data 100txt That's the one we just leaked in. And then we're going to run some code on it. So step four, edit the code on line 11 to use result and password. These are variables. And the best way to do that is to edit letters A and B to result and PW. So let's find A and B. Okay. So if the hash is map, so A we said was result. And B we said was PW. Yeah, that line is just saying if the hashed version of the password matches the result, if they're the same, then we know that they're using a bad password. In this case, we know that they're using password. Exactly. We've edited our code now, Craig. We can now run it and see if anyone is using the word password as their password. You ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Two people. So shughes at jackson.com is using a bad password and wayne59 at yahoo.co.uk is using a bad password. So in this case, Daniel, two out of those 100 people are using the word password as their password. So to answer the question at the bottom, how many passwords were cracked? Two. So great. You could now guess common passwords and check if anyone's using them as their password. So we're going to change the code again to check the top 10 most commonly used passwords. And we've got some instructions again that we need to follow to get the code working. So it says task five, step one, this code checks the leaked data list and tells you who is using password as their password. Okay. So try running that now. So that's the version of the code that we were just running there. Yeah. So there it is. We can see who's using a popular password and what password it is that they're using. Cool. Let's change the code so it can check for other commonly used passwords. Here are the 10 most commonly used passwords, right? So we've got this here. So delete the code in line four and copy and paste this code in instead. Okay. Here we go. So we'll paste that in there and it's in here. Try running the code again and let's see if we've cracked any more passwords from that leak list. So is anyone using one of these top 10 passwords? Well, yes, <laughs> it looks like people are. And I can see here six different passwords have been cracked. So I can see that, yeah, there's the password ones. There's Someone's using one, two, three, four, five. Ruby Reed is using master as our password. And Wayne has used the word password. So we've actually cracked even more people this time by using the top 10 most common passwords. So you can see how this is getting quite dangerous because we, we know how quick it is to guess for one, right? So using a very popular password. And look how quick that was for us to do it with 10 most common passwords. And we've already cracked, how many is that? Six passwords? Yep. We have successfully cracked six passwords. So we're on task six now. So we've just used a list of the top 10 most commonly used password. But this time we're going to change the code to use the top 1000 most commonly used passwords. So this should help us crack even more, Daniel. So. We're just going to follow the instructions again. We'll do it a wee bit quicker this time because we've worked through it. It's very similar. Okay, so task six, we'll go through this one a bit more quickly because it's quite similar to the last one. So it's in here. We're going to change the code further and it's saying to click on the tab titled passwords top1000.txt. 
that file contains a list of the 1000 most popular passwords. So I can see here, yep, we've got lots of different things that look like they might be passwords. And yeah, I believe that there's a thousand there. Perfect. <laughs> Step two is to copy and paste some code onto line six. So actually what we're doing is we're changing some of the code here. So I can see it's changing it to get popular passwords from file passwords top 1000.txt. Well, I can see here I need to make a change. So I'll do that, or again, you could copy and paste it. So this code reads in all the passwords from that file and it stores them in a list. And if we run the code again, we can see, so how many people are using a password that's in the top 1000. Here we go. Okay, Craig, it looks like nine people's passwords are in the today. list. So we've got a few more this time. We've noticed that Ross is using Star Trek. And Shaw okay. is using thanks1138. So we're up to nine now. So the code isn't getting more complicated. So we're on task seven. So you've only been trying to crack a small set of passwords. We've only been trying to crack 100 from the list, Daniel, but we've got a million to choose from. Let's make it much bigger and try and crack some of the first 10,000 passwords from the list. So let's follow these instructions again, Daniel, and see if we can get code working. So we've got some instructions to follow again in the trick kit. Step one is using the top 1,000 passwords is a powerful technique. But let's try using that same code, but on a much larger list. So we're going to look at the file leaked data. 10,000.txt. This has got 10,000 passwords to try and crack. If I go to here, leak data 10,000. Well, this is a much bigger file. And again, we've got email addresses and we've got these hashed passwords that are in MD5 format. We need to try and crack. So step two is to change the code in line nine to be this here. So looking at line nine and it's saying that we're currently opening the top 100 we actually want to be opening up the list of leaked passwords but with 10,000 in it so we're going to add a couple zeros in so it's now leaked data 10,000.txt and this code will read it in a large list of 10,000 usernames and hash passwords i'm going to run the code and see how many we've cracked this time i think it's going to be a bit more than nine craig let's find out so we'll hit run again here we go. Oh, it's much more this time, Daniel. A lot more. Still going. Well, it's got 10,000 to check through as well, so it's going to take longer to run, but looks like we've cracked quite a few there. So what's the total this time? How many? 183 people's passwords. That's a good, that's a good start, isn't it? 183 and people are using things like drummer, Golfer, Guitar, Justice, Passion, Engineer, Fitch, 1990. These are passwords which are in the top 1000 and people are using them and we found them. So it was 183 passwords that we have now. So again, you can see when we're doing this, we're only changing little bits of code. We're only changing one or two lines at a time. Sometimes it's just a few letters, but it's really fun because you're actually getting to see the result of how it works. And this is exactly the type of thing that a cyber criminal or an ethical hacker who was trying to test the security, this is the same sort of process that they would work through as well. So it, it's meant to be reflective of what it would be really like to do this. So Craig, it's now time to try and crack 1 million passwords. So that massive file, this one here with our 14,000 pages, we've split it up into 40 parts to make it smaller so we can actually work through it. And our best bet is to work through one of these parts at a time. So we're going to follow the instructions again to get our code working with all of these different parts. Step one is to open part one using the link above on the page. So we'll open up part one. Yep. And our next instruction is to select all of the names and hashed passwords. And there's a tip here, pressing control and A will select all. We need to copy them and then paste them into the leaked data list tab. Okay. So control and A, and then I'm going to copy them 
and the instruction was to put them in this tab. So leaked data. Okay. And I'm just going to highlight all of these. So select all, and then I've pressed delete. I'm going to paste in these. So these are our 25,000 usernames and passwords from part one. Okay, Craig, we just have to run the code next. Taking a bit longer this time. Here we go. Yeah. It's finding them though. People are using common passwords. I think this goes to show the risk there is in choosing a popular or a common password. The simpler someone's password is, the more likely it is that it could be found using a method like this. If your password is on that list of top 1000 that we're comparing against, it's really easy for someone like us to find that. Doing it right now, in fact, we've found another 479 people's passwords that are using one in the top 1000. So Craig, 479 now. That's great. And that's just from part one. Looking at the instructions again, basically it says now you're going to delete everything in that text file and try it again, but using the information from part two, then part three, then part four, then part five. So people in the class, you could keep a note of how many passwords you've cracked in each part, and then they, they would add them up. They would sum them to work out how many passwords they've cracked in total. Now, what's deliberate here is the idea is when in a normal lesson, if you've only got half an hour or 40 minutes, you're not going to get through the entire 1 million passwords to crack them. That's the whole point. We wanted to make it so that if there's some people in the group who are really quick going through it, really smart at it, really enjoying it, they can get to this step. They might get there quicker than some other people, but actually they'll still be there doing this for a while and they'll enjoy doing it, working through those 40 parts as well, Daniel. I don't think I've even been through all 40 sections of it, but it would work. If you've only got a shorter amount of time with a class as well, you can actually jump straight to this step. If you just go through next on each page at the bottom, that will just take you straight to this step. You don't actually have to go through each of the steps. And the code at the end here on task eight, it's already set up and working. So if you only had a short period of time, you could explain the idea but then you could jump straight to, to this step. But actually, I think people do enjoy going through the whole thing as well. But that's just another option of doing it. Yeah, I quite like this lesson because it means that people who do work through it really quickly, well, this is going to keep you occupied for ages to get through all of these 40 parts. It keeps it nice and open-ended at the end if you are quite quick. And it is quite satisfying finding more of these out. And again, you can actually look through the results and see all the passwords that people are using it is quite interesting just to browse that list or, or talk about. So there's probably things that people are using as their passwords or even some surprising or funny things in there too. So have a play through it yourself. Now you've seen us do it, go through the activity, make sure you understand how it works. Again, you don't need to know exactly all the technical side of it, but just understand how to answer the questions and how to move through it. Have fun with it and have fun using it with your group.